over 1,000 years. It is the center of the world. Rome will not fall. And as long as we have our Caesar, we have our heart. But Walker and his army of Ostrogoths have sacked the city of Ravenna. They're on their way here. People of Rome! Romans has killed the snake. Romans, citizens, once again, we've managed to bring back security to our Roman provinces. Now what do we do about the Mongoose? We just defeated the greatest enemy Rome has ever known. Roma Abitra! Do you hear what our honorable patriot Majorian would now tell us? Now that we've defeated Attila, we're doomed! <laughs> it's only a matter of time that the Germans unite against us. One last time! You come back to me. I've seen the barbarians. I've smelled them. You think that you can predict the omens of Rome? Thousands of them. Change the will of Rome? We must negotiate a solution as the Senate always has. Greed and bickering. The corrupt man. You're just a general. We are the Senate. Senatus. Populus and conscripti. The center. The heart. The father of Rome. You will oppose the will of the Roman Senate. The heart of Rome. It is like you, father. Let it be known in the four corners of the empire that this is my son. Aetius, Patius, Majorian. The future commander of all the Roman armies. My son! <laughs> Hello, my name is Ivan Pavletic and I'm the creator behind this story of 476 AD. Uh, I'm the writer and, uh, and director of it. Uh, would you have seen now is uh, the first book, chapter one, The Last Light of Ares. And I hope you already have seen the first movie, uh, 476 AD, chapter one, The Last Light of Ares, of which now you've seen the trailer. And uh, now we're gonna go for towards chapter two. Now chapter one uh, deals with uh, uh, the last 25 years before the final demise of Western Roman Empire in 476 AD. So it deals with the time period from 451 AD to 476 AD. It deals uh, with 451 because it was a very crucial year at the very end of Western Roman Empire. Uh, it was the year when General Flavius Aetius uh, defeated Attila the Hun. And that was very crucial because uh, Flavius Aetius was one of the last golden age of Rome, golden age generals. He was actually known as the savior of Rome. Uh, so what you see in the movie, in the movie Gladiator, where uh, there's a Maximus, uh, actually there was never a Maximus. A Maximus is actually based on General Flavius Aetius, who really did exist in 451 AD, and really brought Rome its own self back, kind of a thing and the whole aspect of a jealous Caesar who ends up murdering uh, the general because the general was more popular than Caesar himself is actually the case with Flavius Aetius and the Caesar Emperor Valentinian III, which couldn't stand the fact that uh, one general, Flavius Aetius, would be more, more popular than the Caesar, the emperor himself. So the emperor actually had Flavius Aetius murdered. So actually that story really happened in that chapter one that we saw. That's really the true aspect where it happened. Uh, anyways, what, what I tried to depict with chapter one is uh, this, that last slide, that last spark of the old antiquity, the old age of Aries, uh, which was destroyed through the corruption and the corrosion within the Roman Senate actually, and which brought then to the second book, book two, chapter two, Dawning of the Age of Pisces, which is a far darker book, darker chapter, dealing with the actual fall of Rome in 476 AD. So, um, 
I want to present you the trailer for chapter two, and then we will talk some more about it. Welcome back. So, what you saw now was the, uh, the trailer for Chapter 2, Dawning of the Age of Pisces. Now, the second chapter is a far darker chapter. It deals with the far colder uh, aspects of uh, human psycho. And, uh, you know, talking about the human psyche, I wanted to depict a sort of a more, maybe not a nightmarish, but sort of a darker, scarier, dreamy kind of state of mind, uh, which uh, comes from uh, a combination of depression and sadness. But I wouldn't necessarily mix depression with sadness, because depression is more on the physical aspect of, like, 
body chemistry and brain chemistry. I would say rather uh, it's you're awake, but you are remembering the times that were through a certain sad momentum. So it's more of a uh, sad memory kind of thing. It is like facing the depiction of the cold, dark ages uh, with a sadness of memory, uh, re remembering the good times that, which were, but you were not truly fully aware of the good times when they really were good times. So I think the primary difference and the primary uh, element that I wanted to depict at 476, the entire concept, is this shift in the shift in the change of state of mind in, in our in the human psyche going from the last slide of Aries sort of you know the age of Aries which stands for the astrological age like the age of Aquarius sort of like the last age of antiquity the more lighter age the more uh, easier age kind of the more uh, fiery warmer time period where you know sexual freedom was more open, the uh, expression was more open, uh, there were sports, uh, things are more clearer. And then we enter a darker chapter, which is chapter two, Dawning of the Age of Pisces, which deals with uh, that more medieval times, the dark ages, the, the, the time period of the church dogma, the church dominion over really our states of mind and, and the human evolution, you know, the uh, women were put down, uh, women were even burned on stakes, and, and human uh, humor was forbidden. Uh, a lot of elements that existed in ancient Greece and Rome, you know, in the, this entire Greco-Roman time of antiquity was suddenly completely shut down. I mean, there was about a thousand years of Dark Ages, uh, which ended up with a cataclysmic bubonic plague uh, in the 14th century, you know, the culmination of total weakness of the human psyche. And this is something that I tried to depict with this 476 AD concept is that, that shift in the, uh, the state of mind uh, going from one extreme to another. But in that middle, sort of when the fire meets water, you have that kind of smoke going on. You get that um, cloudy smog of uncertainty. And uh, the chapter two uh, um, it goes into that direction. There's a whole sequence, which will you now see in the actual movie. There's a whole sequence of, uh, of a, a dream, of a nightmare, of a premonition of the future, which I wanted to show call it Nostradamus type of a premonition, but sort of a uh, correlation between the, the shift between Aries and dawning of the age of Pisces, let's say some 15, 1600 years ago, and then sort of that dawning of the age of Aquarius, uh, an interesting paradoxical correlation with 1969 Woodstock kind of shift in and change in the state of mind of the sexual revolution, freedom of thought, uh, freedom of expression, and a lot of things that were not around just a decade before, let's say 1969. And, and there's this parallel that I wanted to depict, and, uh, but I wanted to depict it as a time period before that. And uh, yeah, let, let me just, <laughs> show you the movie and uh, and you experience it on your own enjoy
for some time now about these potential developments in Rome. But we must not jump to any quick conclusion. The situation is delicate, my friends, I know. to any mindless speculations. We must negotiate a solution as the Senate always has. Therefore, the Senate cannot succumb to any... simplistic solutions. My Caesar. My Caesar, honorable senators of Rome. General Aetius. Yes, my Caesar. What news do you bring us? Odoacer and his army of Ostrogoths have sacked the city of Ravenna. They're on their way here. I'm afraid the omens are bad, my Caesar. Omens? And what omens would that be, General Aetius? Honorable Romans, citizens, citizens of Rome, do you hear what our honorable patriot majority would tell us? We're doomed! As commander of all the Roman armies, I don't feel adequately appropriate reporting to you, honorable senator. Oh, but this is the Roman Senate. The will of the, the people of Rome. My Caesar, we should start to evacuate the city. Rome has existed for over 1,000 years, young Aetius. For all those centuries, the Senate of Rome has been the heart of Rome. We cannot fall. Evacuate? You think you can predict the omens of Rome? Change the will of Rome? You're just a general. We are the Senate. Senatus! Patres et conscripti! The center, the heart, the fathers of Rome! You would oppose the will of the Roman Senate? The heart of Rome? Fathers of Rome. Heart? You? Look around you. Can't you see what's happening? You want to talk about the heart? You want to talk about the heart of Rome? You must first have a heart. We have our Caesar. Rome has existed for over 1,000 years. It is the center of the world. Rome. And as long as we have our Caesar, we have our heart. 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 Like my father.
He was beyond that bickering and greed that corrupts man. That's why he had to go. That's why he had to be killed. That's why he had to go. Isn't it? Isn't it? How could you ever run? I've just come from the gates of Rome. I've seen the barbarians. I've smelled them. Thousands of them. Ready to come in and attack at any time. Wake up! Our Rome is falling! Aetius. Yes, my Caesar. Dear Aetius. Patrius Majorian, you, of all the warriors of Rome, the most Roman of them all. I remember, I remember you when I was a little boy. And out of all the defenders of Rome, I always looked up to you the most. The true defender of Rome. My Caesar, we can still get you to safety. We must leave now. Our carriage is outside, ready to take you as we speak. But we must leave. There's no more time. The south of Rome is still defended by the legions. We can take you as far as Napolis tonight. From where the galleys will take you to the island of Capri. There you would be safe for the moment. And then, via Sicily, we can transport you all the way to Constantinople in the east. Aetius. Yes, my Caesar. So is my will, and the will of the people. Go on now, my friend. Defend our Rome. Give it your best. Strength and honor.
bastards! Those arrogant bastards. I felt I was right about the Senate, that's why. You have a good army behind you. We have at least a day before they come. There's still some time. Go to her, please. Go to your wife.
can't I feel you? Why? Valeria, it's not that easy. Why? Why are we so beautiful and filled with so much dread? What is wrong? Tell me.
I don't know. I don't know. We'll lead the armies tomorrow because I love you. Why must it be my husband? My husband. My husband. 
Why? My husband! Why? Son of a bitch, I hate you! Mad in their war! Why? This fucking war! <laughs> You come back to me. You understand? You come back to me. I'll come back to you, Valeria. I promise.
Saran. Sun. One day. And welcome back. So, I hope you liked this, what I call it, my uh, Schubert's Eighth Unfinished <laughs> Symphony, kind of a, a, the unfinished cut, the unfinished version of the sequel, Chapter 2, Dawning of the Age of Pisces. Um, we, I cut this, this version, this cut, I cut uh, right at the battle sequence, uh, multiple reasons, primarily financial, budget restraints and because a lot of this uh, uh, a lot of the budgeting for the which was required for the CGI 
rotoscoping, motion tracking, multiplication of characters. Uh, you know, a lot of it, a lot of it costs a lot of money, and uh, uh, there have been some problems regarding the finishing. But so I sort of left for the time being this cut, this uh, chapter two, Dawning of the Age of Pisces, a little bit like the, what I call it, Schubert's uh, unfinished. Uh, um, uh, you know, when you when you look at the budget restraints and 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 then the compromising of the quality versus getting something more fashionable, it is um, for our for us uh, the more poor indie uh, non Hollywood uh, low budget style filmmakers uh, the 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 actual physics of it the actual well the physicality of the actual production becomes more more technical it becomes more realistic uh, as much as I consider myself an artist uh, you know you you need money to actually uh, make something happen so like you can make a movie with little money but you cannot make a movie with no money you know uh, just just the uniforms alone just all the armor and and all the shields and everything that you saw in both chapters that alone cost me from my own pocket some uh, $27,000 or so, this is what, five years ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of this, a lot of this project was pretty much paid from my own pocket, uh, mostly. And when you look at it, it's sometimes you have to make things happen because you have the vision and the time is right. And if you wait too much for, you know, companies, distribution companies, and et cetera, uh, you know, production companies, these big houses, th getting your project ahead and, and investing something like $50 million of their own money into it, uh, you know, you might end up just waiting, waiting, waiting forever. And sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and make the best out of what you have. And what I'd like to suggest, uh, you know, to future filmmakers, to any, you know, young, uh, passionate, uh, passionable, uh, passionate filmmakers who have a vision. Uh, don't be afraid, you know, if you, if there's a lack of self-confidence, a lack of that certain element of insecurity, what the society might think, what the audience might think, you know, the society expectations, don't worry about it because if you have the artistic vision now, and you know it is the right thing. The, the momentum is here, the time is right. Don't worry about what somebody might think or say, or say because the truth is permanent. That which you do from your heart right now will make sense. If not now, in five years, in 10 years from now, in 20 years from now, in 30 years from now. If it is true, it'll make sense. Uh, you know, Art as an art form, be that filmmaking or my real art as painting and drawing. I've been a, a painter and a drawer artist uh, primarily all of my life. And, you know, as a painter, I know that when you paint and draw something, you're not doing it for the society's expectations. You're really doing it from your heart. And I think that's really what matters. Be that music, same thing. If you're writing music from your heart and you feel it, it is the right thing to do. Trust me, it will last if it is honest. So whatever you do, make sure it comes from the heart. Make sure that it is true. And don't worry what others will say. Don't worry about fashion. Fashion comes, uh, comes and goes, but that which is true from the heart will stay and it will remain permanent. And I think, I think with this, call it experiment, let's say, which is one of my experiments. It's not the only one, but the 476 AD concept saga, uh, it is something that I think is meant to uh, meant to make you think. At least I'm I'm hoping so. Uh, it's meant to make you possibly open your sixth sense. Uh, you know, open your eyes a little bit, open your mind a little bit. You know, the, I think that thought versus just reaction you know, momentary gratification uh, is sometimes better. I think the dreamy state of mind, which is depicted in Chapter 2, for instance, in Dawning of the Age of Pisces, I think this dreamy state of mind, uh, 
you know, what you saw with that nightmare sequence uh, sort of sums up this concept that I have tried to achieve. And, uh, you know, I can only wonder how will this concept be perceived in 10 years from now and how will it be perceived in 20 years from now. I only hope uh, that the, 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 the primary concept uh, which deals with these human epochs, uh, you know, this evolutionary state of mind is depicted in a way that uh, that society or, you know, public or audience, whatever you want to call it, will uh, remember this. At least that's what I hope as an artist. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, see you next time.